For the next hour, the green and gold are in charge. <laughs> Welcome to In the Huddle on the Woodward Radio Network. In the Huddle is brought to you by Mole Lake Casino Lodge and Conference Center. Now, here's Bill Scott and Green Bay defensive lineman, B.J. Raji. And good evening, everyone, and welcome to Tanners and Kimberly. Good to have you along this evening. B.J. Raji has the week off with the bye week, so we are joined by Mike Woods of the Appleton Post Crescent and Justin Hull from AM 1570 The Score. We'll do a little roundtable for the next hour. We thank those of you along the network lines on the Woodward Radio Network for joining us tonight. Happy Halloween, everyone. You uh, might be periodically interrupted by some little tykes at your door, but uh, thanks for... Uh, making us a part of your uh, Monday night here on this Halloween. Woodsy, how are you doing? I'm doing great, Bill. Yourself? I'm doing excellent. Uh, we'll start off, we'll kind of go around the league a little bit in this first segment, then we'll spend the rest of the time talking about the uh, the Green Bay Packers. Well, we'll start off with the Packers, though, at 7-0 at and 0 as they come out of the bye week. And uh, for the most part, they pretty much made it look fairly simple in the first seven weeks. Is it because the Packers are so much better or is it that the league has taken a step backwards and is just mediocre? A combination of the two. Um, I mean, that, you know, people talk about the combined records of their opponents, which is, what, a half dozen games or so below 500. Um, you know, but they haven't really been pushed in any of those games either. They've, they've uh, handled their business. Um, you know, it's funny you think back before they got started and everyone was worried about them not getting together during the lockout, which, you know, obviously today meant absolutely nothing. Um, I, I think they're the class of the league. I don't think they're playing uh, as good as they can or uh, even as good as they were at the end of last year, but it's still early. Um, but I, I don't think the league as a whole is nearly as good as it has been. Justin, let me ask you this. As, as Mike says, it is still early, and it is early, so you've got time to get better. Uh, do you fear that certain things will get worse, or do you think the Packers will slide into that level of play like they did last year and be better down the stretch? You have to think they're going to get better because, I mean, when, when you're talking about a team that went on the run that they did at the end of last season and, and just all of a sudden, you know, flipped on a switch and there they were, We've seen that gear, and there's not much reason to believe that they still don't possess that gear. I mean, for the most part, we were talking before the show, you know, Cullen Jenkins and, and Nick Collins, really only two players that are not on this team that, that were last year during this run. So you have to think they have the ability to do it. And, I mean, looking at the, at the rest of the league, perfect example, the Packers look terrible. They beat New Orleans, or um, I'm sorry, St. Louis 24-3. to New Orleans plays St. Louis, looks terrible they lose by 17. I mean, there's there's the difference right there when, when you're talking about what Green Bay has done. They haven't looked pristine, but, you know, their 80% is, is better than most 100% on any given Sunday. All right, I, and, and I'm going to throw this out, and, and I'm going to differ with you a little bit, and then you guys can throw it back in my face if you want. But I, I think the offense really can't play any better than what they're playing right now, for the most part. I mean, the second half against St. Louis, yeah, that, that happened. But for the most part, I mean, Aaron Rodgers is playing as well as he can possibly, I mean, could he do any more? I mean, all he can do is just keep doing what he's doing every week, and, and that will be great football, uh, and great quarterback play from Aaron Rodgers. I think the running game is what it is. I think there's going to be weeks where they're not going to be real strong, and I think there will be weeks where they are real strong, and I think we've seen that pattern develop throughout the course of the season as well. I think offensive line play, for the most part, probably better than average. You know, it, it, it's all right. I think their tight end play has been good. Um, but I think defensively, I think the two guys you bring up, and, and we'll start with Nick Collins. I think Nick Collins is a huge loss for this football team. Part of the thing, Burnett is playing with a cast in his hand, so until he gets that thing off, which might not be till late in the season, we may not see huge. But right now, this defense, that secondary in particular, is missing tackles left and right. If it wouldn't be for Woodson picking passes off, uh, that secondary wouldn't be playing very well at all right now. Uh, yeah, every one of them in the Vikings game had several missed tackles. I think uh, the Collins thing is bigger than a lot of people think. And right now they are getting little to no production from their defensive line. I would agree with you for the most part. I, I remember a couple uh, plays in particular last week uh, against the Vikings when Burnett tried to wrap up Peterson and, you know, he's, he's trying to do it with one club and it's, it's just not happening. Um, but the issues go deeper than that. Uh, but I, the pass rush is, is the big concern. I mean, 
you know, we're, as we were talking before the show, was Cullen Jenkins that important to this team? It, it appears so because uh, they got a decent push up the middle at times last year. Uh, obviously, they got help from the other side. Um, Walden had some good games. Bishop had some good games. Um, but right now, it's it's uh, not much of anything, you know. And, and when you can take away, when all you have to worry about is Clay Matthews, you're going to be in pretty good shape. Mm -hmm. Now, now I will, I, they will get better defensively. I, I'll give you, I will give you that. I just don't know how much better. Here's here's the other thing too. Offensively, can they get better? If they don't score a touchdown on a drive, they're going to say they can get better. Aaron Rodgers, Mike McCarthy, all the receivers, they're saying that, you know, their best football is yet to come. Now, obviously, when you watch that team, it's kind of hard to fathom that. And if they can get better, it's going to be an amazing final nine games of the season. But, you know, defensively, too, and, and I hate to sound like Mr. Homer stick up for this team, but in all reality, every time they've needed to make a play this year, they have. And, and when the offense struggled in that second half against St. Louis, the defense has stepped it up. It's almost like when the offense is playing great, the defense puts it in cruise control. When the offense has struggled a little bit, that's when the defense has really stepped up and made plays. So it's a matter of when is this team going to play both, you know, both sides of the football at both levels. That's the defense, the defense has stood up. I mean, when the offense hasn't, and the, we've seen so much from the offense, so I think we're trying to compare the defense to why aren't they playing at the offensive level in that? Well, so, defensively, they're, they they're went, not. They went into this week 27th in the National Football League in yards. Now, I realize points allowed is the number one stat. Um, red zone defense is, is probably the next most important stat. They're very good at both of those. I just don't know that you can week in and week out, and especially in the second half now when the teams get a little better, I don't know that you can let teams just run down the field on you every week and, and, and just think that you're automatically going to continue to keep them out of the end zone. I, I think at some point if they don't shore up the first part of it, they're going to get bit on the back end. But well, they, 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 every one of their games they've been leading by double digits. And that's when a lot of the yards have come in. I mean, the Denver game well, specifically, they broke out. Every game they've led by they, double they digits. They fell behind 13 to nothing to Carolina. They and then they, were up, then they were up 30 to 16. That. But and that's when you half fall behind came. those kind of points against good football teams on the road. Not, we're not talking Carolina. We're not talking St. Louis. You know, teams like that, although they were ahead of St. Louis. But, you know, the, the teams that they're falling behind, uh, the Vikings at the Metrodome, if, if you fall behind against real good football teams down the stretch, I don't know that it's going to be so easy to just turn it on and Atlanta, come from behind. Atlanta's a good football team. All right. Atlanta's, Atlanta's an average football okay. team. Right? All right. We'll come back. We'll continue. Woodward Radio Network in the huddle continues from Tanner's after this. Defensive lineman B.J. Raji. No B.J. Raji this week, taking the night off with the bye week. We're joined by Mike Woods of the Appleton Post Crescent and Justin Hull from AM 1570. The score. We're live at Tanner's, where we are each and every Monday night throughout the football season. Tuesday nights after Monday night games. During our regular shows, our players are transported by LNS Classic Limousine Service, personal professional service for all occasions. Call 800-830-5933 for your reservation. All right, let's go back to where we left off. Mike, you were waiting so patiently to get in. And yeah, before you had to pay your bills, um, <laughs> the point I was trying to make is that the, the defense, you, you, you talked about, you know, you, if are, are they going to eventually pay the piper with someone running up and down the field on them and not getting in the end zone? They, they, they probably will because if they don't get better, through the first seven games, they played one very good quarterback, and that's Drew Brees. And they almost coughed that one up. That's the closest one they came to coughing up. The other guys, you know, I mean, they gave up over 400 yards passing a couple of rookie quarterbacks. You know, if you got a different quarterback in that situation, do they take advantage of, of the Packers' poor defensive uh, pass play? And, you know, when it just goes back to emphasize, I mean, why are the Packers so great this year at this point? Quarterback play. I mean, you know, the, the guys on the record going on, you know, pace for, I guess you'd call it the NFL triple crown with – completion percentage and, and yards and uh, quarterback rating. You know, he's on pace to set records in all three of those departments. And, you know, if once the season goes on, they're obviously going to be playing better quarterbacks. And, you know, they're going to have to do something to shore up what's going on now or those, you would believe those other quarterbacks could take advantage of them. Justin, the Lions rolled Denver 45-10 yesterday. And we know what Denver you know, not a real good football team. It's about the score that the Packers... 
took care of Denver, or you know, it, I mean, it kind of felt like that in that range. Yeah. But, but I thought it was a it was important for Detroit because they were kind of reeling with two back to back losses, and they kind of went out on the road and I think proved something and picked up their sixth win in the process. It, was, it didn't hurt them that Tim Tebow was out there, 5 of 14, <laughs> looking completely lost, you know, Florida yeah. fan over here. But, no, it, it was it was a good win for them. I mean, to go on the road in the NFL, I mean, New Orleans, I mentioned New Orleans lost to St. Louis yesterday. We saw Baltimore last week go to Jacksonville and lose, teams that you should beat. I mean, that's the biggest thing in the NFL. That's what separates the playoff teams from the non-playoff teams, it seems like, in such a mediocre NFL where 9-7 and seven and 10-6 and six teams are getting in left and right. So they, they played well. Matthew Stafford, uh, everyone talked at the beginning of the season, can he stay healthy? He has, and, you know, you, you take care of business. He had a nice game. Calvin Johnson had a nice game. And defensively, too, I mean, they took advantage of some uh, flaws on, on the Broncos' side of things. But you're right, I think it was the, the right step that they needed to separate themselves from the Bears because all of a sudden people are like, oh, are the Bears going to catch the Lions, you know, after two weeks? And that's how we always get two wins, two losses, and everybody's ready to write the ship on people. So. San Francisco improved to 6-1 and one with Jim Harbaugh. How good are the 49ers? I like them. I mean, they, you know, you, you go up and down the roster, they got a lot of talented players on that team. And for whatever reason, they just did not respond to Singletary. And, uh, you know, you always wonder about a college coach uh, moving up to the uh, NFL and, and seeing – if they can carry that kind of success, how the players are going to respond to them. But obviously Harbaugh had a huge, huge advantage being a, a former player for many, many years and has a pretty good idea what works and what doesn't. And, you know, I mean, you know, how, how can you not say it's not coaching? Because, I mean, it's essentially the same roster. Mm -hmm. Let me throw some teams at you. You tell me, both of you, who you think it, you would worry about at this uh, as the season rolls on. Uh, based on what you know of them, what you would project. Pittsburgh, Cincinnati, Baltimore, Houston, and we'll throw Buffalo and San Diego in the mix. Well, the way Pittsburgh looked yesterday, uh, I would worry about them right now, but, you know, you just never know, you know, seven weeks from now, uh, injuries and all that stuff that factor into it that, you know, it's impossible to say at this point, but Pittsburgh looked really good yesterday. They, they handled New England without much problem. You know, I hear Baltimore and their consistency is the one thing because, I mean, you talk about talent up and down a roster, but, I mean, they haven't been able to do it all season long. They look phenomenal week one against Pittsburgh. Everybody's writing them as, you know, the AFC favorite. Then they came back the next week and lost to Tennessee. Then when they started looking like, okay, they're the class of the AFC, they score seven points and don't have a first down for three quarters against Jacksonville. I mean, it's all about consistency with a lot of those teams. Buffalo's the, the intriguing one, I think on that list, and even Cincinnati to a point, too, because history says you, you don't want to believe in Buffalo and you don't want to believe in Cincinnati, but the way those teams have played, they've played very consistent, and even the games they lost, they've been in them. They really haven't thrown out those stinkers, and I, I think that's what the difference with those two is. All right, Mike, 13-0 and now is the Eagles' record coming off of bye weeks when they go in to play a game. They embarrassed Dallas last night. The Eagles are now 3-4, and four, tied with Dallas. I contend that Andy Reid is going to have Philadelphia back in the playoff picture. Uh, their backs are against the wall. They've made a whole bunch of moves. Things haven't worked yet. Doesn't mean they're not going to work. Um, what are your thoughts on that football team? Are, are you think they're going to make a push? I think they're going to be a playoff team. I think they'll be in the playoffs uh, as long as Michael Vick is uh, still standing. I think, you know, whatever was ailing them the first uh, four or five weeks of the season, I think they're starting. You can see they're starting to figure it out. And... Um, I, you know, I, I, they could be one of those teams that, you know, when come playoff time, you're going to say, boy, you don't want to play the Eagles. All right. We're going to start with the uh, the Packers now. We kind of talked about the defensive line. Clay Matthews at linebacker, three sacks, way down in terms of where he was a year ago. He was against the Vikings, though, a good example, double team 52% of the time. So he's drawn a lot of double teams. I think he's really falling victim to the fact that nobody else is really picking things up. The defensive line isn't putting a lot of pressure on. They're not getting consistent play from the other backer on the other side. And quite frankly, I've been watching Woodson and Williams and guys that do the safety or corner blitzes. They're just not getting home. And I wonder how much defense or how much the, the opposition has been able to scout Dom Capers and what he did and maybe Dom's got to come up with a, with a fresh approach because maybe they're, they're, they're figuring out ways to stop Dom Capers right now. I still think it's a player issue. I think uh, Cullen Jenkins is a lot more valuable to that team than people realize. We're finding that out right now. Um, 
you know, good players are going to make plays regardless. And, uh, you know, they just, you know, when, when you don't have any threat from the other side, it's pretty easy for an NFL uh, team to take care of one guy, which they've done with Matthews. And I don't think he's really played that bad. I know he's only got three sacks, which he had, what, six in the first two games last year. But um, he, he's getting close. And I think, you know, if there was any threat on the other side, he'd be having a much better year. Yeah, I think it starts with a line, too. I mean, as a 3-4 defense, your guys up front are the guys that take up the space and allow the linebackers to come through. And the great 3-4 defensive linemen are the ones that, that get through and make plays. So how much are they missing Cullen Jenkins? They put all their eggs in the Mike Neal basket. He hasn't been able to get healthy, get on the field. It'll be interesting to see when he comes back, how effective he can be. But, you know, Dom Capers has – tweaked things throughout his career. He got an extra week here. The San Diego game could tell a lot with Phillip Rivers. We talked about not going up against a good quarterback. Phillip Rivers is a pretty good quarterback. I mean, when you're talking about in the NFL, and I know San Diego is a team that has a pretty potent offense. So what does he do coming out of that bye week? If it's more than the same, then you know maybe the, the worries will start to come from that pass rush. But I think it's a combination of the Packers being scouted, you it's a copycat league. They won the Super Bowl last year. Teams were really looking at how you beat Green Bay, broke down that defense and stuff, and how does Capers come about, and, and can some of the players step up and start making plays? The rest of the linebackers, I think Walden on the other side has had, had his moments, good, some good, some not, or some just average. I think Brad Jones has been a, a pretty big failure so far this year. I think guys on the inside, I think Bishop has been absolutely amazing, and I think A.J. Hawk has been very average. Up to this point, uh, I, I can't recall A.J. Hawk making too many plays so far yet this season. No, you don't hear his name called a lot, and uh, that's usually a pretty good indica indicator of what's good, what he isn't doing. Um, you know, he had that good second half to last year, and, and, you know, he obviously had some motivation when he wasn't playing at, at all. They sat him down at the beginning of last year, so he had plenty of motivation to uh, try and get better and make plays and, and uh, get on the field. And it's it's almost like it's almost like he he says signed a new contract now that he's got a job he's kind of like eh, in cruise control yeah. and and I don't know that it's that way with him but I'm, it I'm seems, not saying it is either yeah but, but it, it just, seems that way he's he's been good his entire career you know we look at him as he should be the number five pick and and I think we expect more and from he AJ be. Hawk but he's been <laughs> That's consistent where he was picked. he's been consistent <laughs> at that AJ Hawk level I think the second half yeah. of last year has really been the best moments of his career but outside of that he's just been Average. It's, right. it's fair right. to say he was picked a little high. Consistently yeah. average is probably not getting it done for what he's being paid. All right, we'll take a break, come back with more from Tanners and Kimberly after this on the Woodward Radio Network. Now, back to In the Huddle with Bill Scott and Green Bay defensive lineman, B.J. Raji. And we are back. No B.J. Raji this week. B.J. is out trick-or-treating tonight, said he'd be back with us again next Monday. So uh, Mike Woods from the Appleton Post Crescent is along. We're uh, brought to you tonight by Mole Lake Casino Lodge and Conference Center. Enjoy the excitement of Vegas close to home at Mole Lake Casino Lodge and Conference Center in beautiful Crandon, Wisconsin. Uh, back with uh, the boys, Mike Woods from the Appleton Post Crescent, Justin Hall from AM 1570, the score, who is with us every week uh, anyway in a little bit different capacity. And uh, we will not have our question of the week, our email segment of the week, brought to you by Granite Peak. We will resume that again next week, primarily because without B.J. Raji, we have no questions. No questions. Yeah. So kind of tough to do the question of the week without any questions, right? We could come up with some questions. Oh, I'm sure we could, but, you know, <laughs> we give the, give the ski trip to Woodsy. We could do that. Uh, Woodsy can't ski. <laughs> yeah. I'd like to try, though. I, I'd, I'd love to be a fly on the wall watching that. All right, uh, let's go back to... Uh, the Packers came back in practice today. They'll get tomorrow off and then resume workouts on Wednesday. And because of the way the CBA, the, the new collective bargaining agreement, is written, there's basically one padded practice a week. I think down the stretch, there's a week or two where they get none. And then this week, for what, then there's one week where they can throw two in there. And this is the week that McCarthy decided to throw two. They worked out for about an hour and a half today. And, and he added the uh, second padded practice today, and they'll work out in pads again on Thursday. McCarthy's mentioned it several times and about his team, and you can see it league-wide, that the lack of padded work has led to a lack of poor fundamentals and poor tackling. I mean, across the board, you watch any NFL game, 
and you will see a number of poor tackles or poor tackling, missed tackles, poor fundamentals across the board. It's pretty simple. Tackling is one of those skills that if you don't do it, you're not going to get better at it. I mean, you have to actually go out and tackle people, and that's how you get better. And when you're not doing it, it leads to, uh, like I said, it leads to sloppiness, poor fundamentals. Um, you know, if you, it's like any other sport. If, if you don't practice your fundamentals, how can you improve on them? And um, obviously that's a rule I'd like to see erased, but we're stuck with it for a while. For, do you think it'll come back? Well, I think that, I think it's a combination too of all the the helmet to helmet stuff, the the rule changes that are in there for the safety of the game. You know, obviously not being able to practice in the new CBA has a lot to do with it. But I think it's been a trek that we've been seeing go down over the last few years, and you know, with no off season workouts and that, I think the defense has been something. But not being able to practice it too, with that consistency. It's it's taken away from that. The defensive defensive players. I mean, you listen to you know James Harrison and the likes. I mean, they're they're not going to change their game because they're psycho. But in the back of your mind, if you know if your paycheck is ten, you're losing 10 percent of your paycheck if you make a helmet to helmet hit. I think that's in the back of the mind of some of those defensive players and why they're not doing it exactly the the way they should. But I think there's a big difference in in those type of hits you're talking about in basic tackling that you know that that. That is, is just not good. It's, it's not good league-wide. And uh, you saw a lot of it against Adrian Peterson last week uh, for the Packers. And Well, there's no attempt to wrap up at all. They're, the Packers' secondary, including Charles Woodson, all they do is they throw their body at the, at the player. There's no attempt to tackle with a, with a face mask up and wrapping around the legs or wrapping around the, the, the waist or whatever, it's, it is completely throw your body at the guy, hope you hit him hard enough that he falls down. For, for me, I mean, it, it's, it's almost reached the point where has, when a guy does do a good form tackle, you actually stand up and take notice. That shouldn't be the way it is. <laughs> it starts in college, though, too. I mean, if you watch the college game, that's where the fundamentals of football they come from. And in college, you're seeing more of the dive at the legs and, and that sort of thing, too. I just think overall as the sport, the fundamentals are, are leaving. And, you know, it's, it's a combination of all that stuff. Yeah. And, uh, At least in college, though, they practice in pads almost every day. And they're making an effort to try and, and, and have this in, in the pros. Uh, I, I think sometimes they just assume that you're supposed to know how to do it. And when the game rolls around, you're going to do it. And I think we're pretty, pretty clearly it's, it's just not that way. It's like bunting in baseball. You've got to continue to do it to know how to do it. Yeah. And we know that there's not a lot of teams that do <laughs> nope. that either. All right. Uh, we, we, we talked a little bit about Aaron Rodgers. Uh, contract extensions. Jermichael Finley, Scott Wells. Then they've got to redo Aaron Rodgers at some point here. And probably the same thing with Clay Matthews. Will become a, those are the two guys extension-wise that are under contract for next year. But, you know, if you're going to get cap relief, uh, those are the guys that you probably want to redo their contracts. Finley, is, is it just automatic that... I mean, there are some people, and there's part of me that thinks this way, too, that sometimes this guy, in, in the way he... Now, lately, he's been pretty good. I mean, he hasn't had a lot of balls thrown his way. He's played a lot of snaps, and he hasn't said boo. But there have been times where sometimes you just wonder what planet this guy is on. That's okay. Is there anything about that, the guy that scares you? No, uh, not really. Um, I just, for me, a good tight end in a passing game is so important to be able to get that ball down the middle. Look at the years when Favre had Keith Jackson and, and Shamura all those years, and they were, I mean, it makes everybody better around him. When he didn't have a decent tight end, they struggled more. So, you know, he, he's, a, uh, he's, a, he's a freak, he's a talent, and uh, I'm, I'm going to do what I can to keep that guy. I agree with all the talent stuff, but I'm, I'm like Bill. I have that little side of me. I mean, you, you look at that locker room, and, and Ted Thompson and the Packers personnel staff put together a 52-man roster of great character, team-first people. And then there's Drew Michael Finley, it seems like, who doesn't fit under that mold. So there's that part of you that scares you. There's also, with Finley, it, it's all been upside for him. We've seen the flashes of talent. He hasn't put it together consistently for an entire season. He's either been you know, injured, and he's so young, too, which factors into that, too. So there are a couple of red flags that, at least in my mind, if it doesn't happen, I can be like, okay, you know, I saw those red flags, too. But you know, if, if I was the one writing up the contract, I would give him the money. Yeah, well, I, they're going to give him the money. Yeah. I don't think there's any question about it, just whether 
or not you think there's a red flag there or not, but... Uh, there's a couple little yeah. ones. <laughs> all right, Aaron Rodgers still weaves the ball through traffic, all right? Still throws it away when he has to, though. Accuracy second to none. 20 touchdowns, only three interceptions. Two went off a receiver's hands, too. Yeah, mm -hmm. so why is, is he so good? I think he's worked at the game. I mean, he's you know, worked the hardest. I think he has. I think, I mean, he's, he learned, you know, he learned from Brady, he learned from Montana. I mean, you know, those guys, that was their, that's their calling card is accuracy. And if you can put the ball where you're supposed to, I mean, that's going to make anybody better. And, you know, I, I think he just has a incredible work ethic. I think he has a very high desire to be the best quarterback there is. And, um, I, I think that's what puts him over the top is just that, you know, and, and the thing is, is we don't know what's he, what goes on in the offseason. He just kind of disappears, and, and, but he, it's clear he's been working. You know, he learned what to do from those guys, and, you know, I, and I know this is going to be a shot at the previous guy, so I'm just going to say it. He learned what not to do. I mean, you look at Favre at the end of his career. He was sitting at home deciding whether or not he wanted to come in. He didn't want to do the off-season workouts. He didn't want to do this. He didn't want to do that. And then not only that, but on the field, I think he saw some of the decision-making flaws that Favre made and, and how it affected the team. I mean, for as many games as Favre won on his arm, he lost, lost another game on his arm. And I think Rodgers took note of that while he was in there, and he, and he learned – what to do from some of the greats, as you mentioned. And I think with Favre, you know, he, he took a little what to do, and I think he took a lot of what not to I do, a, and I think that helps him out. I think that's a great point about the staying away. Favre didn't want to work in the offseason, wanted to, you know, he had days where they would, the team would automatically give him off where he wouldn't have to be there. And I think Mike McCarthy does that to a certain extent with his veteran players, but I think Rodgers has a, obviously a much stronger desire to, uh, from, from a work ethic standpoint. But I think Rodgers is just a more accurate passer than Favre ever was. I think Rodgers takes just as a, I mean, I've seen him throw the ball 20 yards downfield and weave a ball through just this little hole. And, and on the other end is Jermichael Finley ca catching a football. And there's two defenders. I mean, it, it seems like it gets, makes its way through two defenders and, and the ball's caught and the reception's made. I, I think he takes chances. I just think he's, he's, uh, he's far more accurate. Calculated. If, if you remember, though, Favre did the same thing when it was about this age. He was the same way. I mean, everyone talked. Boy, did you see that little window he put that ball through? Yeah. But, but the difference is, and we don't know what's going to happen with Rodgers, but Favre stopped working. He, he, he felt a sense of entitlement. I don't have to work as hard. I, you know, how many times did you say, I've got nothing to prove? I always thought that was the biggest bogus statement you could make, man. Dude, you got something to prove every day you show up. All right, we're going to continue our conversation. Mike Woods in the Post Crescent, Justin Hall, back with more after this on the Woodward Radio. In the huddle with Bill Scott and Green Bay defensive lineman B.J. Rashi. And we're back at Tanner's Sports Bar and Grill in Kimberly. Good to have you along here on this Halloween night. Mike Woods from the Appleton Post Crescent and Justin Hull from AM 1570. The score. I'd like to welcome Packer fans listening back home in Amory, Wisconsin tonight in WXCE. Of course, here in Appleton, WHBY and WSCO. In Eau Claire and WBIZ down in Madison on WTSO. In Viroqua, our good friends at WBRQ, and in Wausau tonight on, WTT, uh, on WDTX, that is the uh, Woodward Radio Network. Uh, Granite Peak Ski Area in Wausau, the tallest and largest ski area in Wisconsin with over 700 vertical feet and 74 runs. This year offers an expanded beginner area, new fleet of rental equipment, and 10 new snow guns for the best snowmaking in the state. For more information and discounted season passes and lift tickets, go to Ski Granite Peak. Dot com. Ordinarily, SkiGranitePeak.com. This would be our email segment, but uh, we'll uh, pass on that this week and uh, pick it up again next week with uh, Justin Hull and uh, B.J. Raji will be back in the saddle with us again next week. Let's talk about the offensive line. Scott Wells, T.J. Lang. I think T.J. Lang played his best game against the Vikings a week ago. Uh, Josh Sitton at uh, right guard. Uh, Marshall Newhouse filling in the left tackle. Chad Clifton. It's starting to look like he may be back at some point in the second half. Uh, Brian Balaga, Derek Sherrod, I mean, they're kind of getting a lot of, uh, a lot of people to do a lot of different things and kind of just piecing it together. I think that, uh, that bodes pretty well. I remember, I remember a year ago, James Campen was taking a lot of heat for that offensive line. And right now, James Campen, with the assistance of Joe Philbin, they're holding that thing together pretty well. 
Well, last year, they, for the most part, they, you know, we had the same five guys you could roll out there every week, and cohesiveness in that, in that part of the, uh, the team is, is uh, probably the most important of uh, any group. On the other hand, like you said, a lot of guys are getting playing time. Uh, a lot of guys are learning on the job. You know, and, and it's, it's a situation where they may have their struggles, but not, they're not failing monumentally. You know, they're not killing the team. So, uh, you know, it, down the road, that's only going to help this group. I think they dedicated to get better too. I mean, for years, it's like, why don't why don't they go draft the bookends? You know, why don't why aren't they getting the replacements? Well, over time, they have, and, and a few draft picks. You know, T.J. Lang panning out as a fourth round pick. Josh Sitton, who might be one of the uh, the best picks Thompson has ever had. I mean, a kid out of Central Florida that nobody heard of coming in, and now he's considered by many as one of the best interior linemen in the league. So, piecing that together over the years and just having some consistency to put it get together too with the dedication, I, I, I think that's helped out a lot. As well. I'd give the coaches credit for, uh, as we like to say, coaching them up because uh, uh, they've obviously taught their lessons and, and the players have learned them well. Josh Sitton, by the way, uh, was did not make the Pro Bowl last year, but he was voted all pro. So, you know. <laughs> I, I don't know how that works. That's well, why fans shouldn't well, vote on Pro Bowl. Well, that's part of it. Yeah, it's, <laughs> it's the people that are making the decisions um, that, on all pro and, and even players. I mean, voting for their favorite guys or, or you know, whatever. I mean, I don't, I don't think, friends. yeah, I don't think they all take it as serious as they should. Clifton was voted to the Pro Bowl last year. I mean, that's yeah. what, that's all that needs to be said on there. I, th I think with sitting, getting the notoriety, he'll never struggle again to get to a Pro. And he's actually probably having a little bit of a down year compared to what he did last year, mm -hmm. but he'll still get voted to the Pro Bowl because his name is now known. Yeah. By the way, one of the things that this coaching staff has done this year, and Mike McCarthy has, which I think is, I mean, I, it'll, time will tell to see how exactly how well it works. But I think it's a good call on McCarthy's part because they didn't have the OTAs and because they didn't have the mini camps with these young guys. He has, every Thursday and every Friday, he has had those players work extra long with their position coaches on fundamentals and different things in the offense and the defense and special teams. So if you're a rookie, if you're a first-year free agent, probably a, you know, somebody that's only been in the league one or two years, you're working a little extra long time with your, with your coaching staff and, and working on those things that are going to make you a better football player so that if you're, and, and basically non-starter, so that if an injury rolls around, and we, we, as you say, coach them up, those players are going to be more ready to go. You know, I remember when McCarthy came in a while ago and, and uh, I remember the first press conference I asked Ted Thompson, so what was it about this guy? Because, you know, we didn't know anything about right. him. And whether he's learned on the job or, or uh, was just a lot smarter than uh, any of us ever knew at the time. But, you know, there's so many times in any sport where, you know, the big picture takes precedence. And those little things on fundamentals, you know, as the season wears on, they don't get over. Not that they get overlooked, but you just don't spend the time on them. But the fact that he, he does this week in and week out just makes that group better top to bottom. You mean McCarthy's still not getting by with his macho Pittsburgh attitude? <laughs> Isn't that, isn't that what Thompson he said? He may have a macho we're gonna attitude. Foot, we're going to run the football? <laughs> yeah, he, he may have a macho attitude, but he's the furthest thing in, in the way he runs his offense from being macho, I'll tell you that. Now, that means, leads me to the next question. We're continually seeing McCarthy and, and then Rodgers subsequently throw the ball to 9, 10, 11, 12 guys every week completing passes, running backs, tight ends, wide receivers. Is this to have the chance to be maybe the most prolific offense in the National Football League in 10, 20 years when I, we finish here? I think it's on pace right now. I mean, until somebody shows how you stop this offense without this offense stopping itself. I mean, that that's the thing. Go to the St. Louis game, penalties on third down, drop passes. I mean, that's what was drop, stopping the drives. It wasn't interceptions. It wasn't breaking up passes. It was Green Bay stopping itself. I, I think they're on pace for that. I mean, everybody's... You know, comparing the seasons with the Packers to the 07 Patriots. Can they run the table? I think a more interesting comparison is what Rodgers is doing this year in the command he had and what Brady did that year because, I mean, that year just watching Brady, it was just smooth, and I think that's where Rodgers is right now. Mike got about 25 seconds here. Well, yeah, I mean, Brady, I would say Rodgers has, has, has better weapons and more weapons. Um, you know, I, I just... Uh, 
I have a hard time believing anyone's going to be able to stop these guys because, because you know, he is smart enough. He just takes what's given to him. And I know it's an old cliche and all that other stuff, but that's why nine, ten guys are getting the ball every week because who's ever open, they get the ball. All right, we're going to come back with our final segment as we wrap things up here at Tanner's and Kimberly after this on the Woodward Radio Network. In the huddle with Bill Scott and Green Bay defensive lineman B.J. Rashi. And we are back again. Mike Woods from the Appleton Post Crescent and Justin Hall from AM 1570. The score here at Tanner Sports Bar and Grill in Kimberly. Uh, B.J. Raji has the night off. We'll be back with us again next Monday after the Packers take on the San Diego Chargers on Sunday afternoon. Uh, again, originally, ordinarily, last segment would have been our email segment brought to you by Granite Peak in uh, Wausau, and uh, we'll do that again next week. Ordinarily right now, we will be announcing our winner of that uh, uh, ski package for two for two nights. So uh, we'll uh, give away a winner, uh, have a winner for you next week. Uh, all right, your, your highlight or the thing that uh, sticks out for you, good or bad, about the first half of the season, the first seven wins for the Packers. It's got to be the player. I mean, I thought Rodgers was going to be the, the most improved player on the team this year. I just felt that way. Uh, but but the way he's playing is, is uh, I was talking to the guys that worked the other day, and I said, you know, it's almost to the point now where he's kind of like Jordan and Tiger Woods in the sense that you're seeing excellence every week. That's why I watch sports. I love to see excellence, you know, and I just, I just love to watch the guy play just to see – him perform at such a high level week in week out and you know if, if this keeps up through the rest of the year you know he's going to be kind of rewriting uh, uh, the, the quarterback position in terms of excellence and that's you know that's you know you're, you're potentially watching history here mm -hmm. I agree everything Mike said that would be my number one I'll throw in a number two Mason Crosby the year that he's having you know and you can say what you want that he hasn't you know kicked at all at Lambeau Field or anything but I just remember the scrutiny of this guy for the last three years. He got the big payday, and he's he's justifying it, kicking. I mean, he, he's kicking as well as Aaron Rodgers is throwing right now. I talked to him today a little bit in the locker room, and uh, and, and I think that uh, even though he wouldn't quite admit to it because he's a pretty simple guy, he doesn't want to use his excuses or anything like that for uh, makes or misses, you know, in the past. He, he, he likes to, you know, kind of just be a pretty straightforward guy, and if he misses, he misses. If he makes it, he makes it. But I think the, the new kickoff rule, the fact that he doesn't have to worry anymore about placing balls right, placing balls left. He just bangs away, kicks it, you know, deep, and, and they have to decide if, if it's eight yards deep if they want to bring it out. But there's not a lot of there's not a lot to the game plan for kickoffs anymore because of the new kickoff rule. And I think that's allowed him to not have to worry so much about his job other than the fact that you kick it deep and then when it's time to go kick a field goal, you kick a field goal. Well, you're 100% right because he had to worry more about his job because the coverage units, as we all know, weren't <laughs> right. that good. So I'm sure he felt, you know, if I don't put it right here, we could be in big trouble. All right. How many wins will this team have at the end of the regular season? I'm going to say 14. I'll say 14. Right, I'll say 15. I think there's one slip on the agenda. Don't know where it is. I don't have a team in mind. but I, I think Detroit at Thanksgiving's never been good to them. Yeah. yeah. I, th I think this Sunday is going to be an interesting one. Could be. Could be. All right. Does the, uh, the NFC Championship game then obviously go through Lambeau Field? It may. It probably will. And uh, oddly enough, I don't know if that's an advantage or not. Um, I think last year they showed... Uh, you know, their worst game of the, that playoff run was uh, was uh, the last one, the coldest one in, in Chicago. And, you know, I, I think they're actually our team more built for speed, more built for indoors. And, uh, you know, having home field isn't going to hurt, but uh, I, I don't think uh, it would really matter where they play. I think New Orleans, if, if, if it's going against New Orleans in the NFC Championship game, which everybody believes that's going to be the game, I think Lambeau Field will actually benefit Green Bay because, yes, they're both not built for a fast track, but New Orleans isn't used to playing at Lambeau Field, so I think that's where the benefit comes from. And, yeah, I, it's going to go through Lambeau because, I mean, San Francisco's got one loss. I, I don't think they're going to end with, you know, 14, 15 wins. I don't think Detroit is either. So I just think that's a given that Green Bay will uh, I think San Francisco's host. the one team, and I, and I agree, I think it's going through Lambeau. I think San Francisco's the one team that – defensively the way they play could be disruptive in Green Bay and cold weather you know you, you shorten everything up it's not going to be such a you know fast track anymore 
we're talking about cold weather, most likely cold weather. So, uh, but I do like the Packers. Uh, will Aaron Rodgers? I won't even win the MVP award. We pretty much know the answer to that. Barring, barring any injury or concussion, he's it. Yeah, first time out west for the Packers this uh, Sunday against San Diego. What are you guys looking for? I think with a week off, you know, they their their history's been pretty good with a week off, and uh, I would expect them to play very well again. It'd, it'd be interesting to see. I'm most interested to see how the defense stands up against Philip Rivers. I mean, that's that's the one thing I'll be looking forward and to see what happens in this game. The offense, I think they'll just keep right on uh, doing what they've been doing. Yeah, Philip Rivers, how they go up against a good quarterback. We talked about that earlier. This could be a this could be a big uh, quiet the critics game for Green Bay, or on the flip side, it could be uh, another uh, you know way to light the fire under the critics as yeah. well. I think San Diego's a better red zone team with Gates. He's, he's a very good tight end. I, I, I think it's going to be interesting to see because they, the, I think the Packers will be tested more in that area than they, than they have at any point this season, so should be interesting. All right, is this Donald Driver's last season in a Packers uniform? I'm not counting that guy out yet. Um, he, he obviously has not had a great year, but... Um, you know, he, he's, a guy, he's a guy that's very dedicated in doing what he has to with his body to make sure he's ready. So uh, it'd be easy to say, yeah, right now it looks like he's done, but I'm not going to count him out just yet. Okay. I'll say yes, plain and simple. I, 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 I would lean towards yes, plain and simple, um, but I'm going to give a little bit of yours, and maybe I'm taking the easy way out here, but uh, I, I think a lot has to do with who else shows up at the wide receiver position. You know, you got to have somebody to replace them, I guess, is what it boils down to. So, all right, guys, thanks, Mike. Thanks for coming out. Uh, best of luck to you the rest of football season, and uh, we'll do it again uh, soon. All right, thanks, Bill. Justin, thank you very much. Talk to you next week. Justin will be back with us next week. B.J. Raji will be back as well. For our engineer, Evan Stanek, Reggie Rizou back in our studios, and Phil Rothman, the invisible one. We'll be back again next week. Next Monday night from Tanner's here in Kimberly on the Woodward Radio Network.